Hello there and welcome back to the Chaps Guide. My name is Ash and I am your host on this journey into men's style, self-development and personal grooming. Now today, well, I'd like to talk to you about what is undoubtedly the most versatile jacket that every man should have in his wardrobe. It is, of course, the ever stylish, the all-conquering navy blazer, the garment which I'm wearing today, and you'll often catch me wearing in many of my videos, or if you meet me in real life, chances are I'm gonna be most likely wearing the navy blazer because it's so useful and wearable across a wide variety of different situations in life. Now I'm a big fan of understanding more about the clothes that I wear by looking back in their history at their origin story. And it's a fascinating story when we talk about the jacket I'm wearing today. Now it began life in the early 1800s as it was worn as the kind of sporting uniform by members of the Lady Margaret Boating Club. Now that's a part of the historic Cambridge University in England and the, the team members would wear these distinctive red jackets and they became known over time as blazers because they were bright red and of course red being associated with flames and fire they became known as blazers. Now as time passed the word blazer uh, sort of expanded to mean any brightly coloured garment often worn in the uh, in this sort of sporting arena and if you think even in the modern era you look at people who are members of cricket clubs yachting clubs, still very much the case boating clubs, golf clubs, you know, you think of the, uh, the green jacket that people who win the Masters trophy uh, sort of get as that rite of passage to becoming champion, that is in essence a blazer. So the history of the blazer goes back a couple of hundred years and it's still going strong today and you'll often see sports people with their blazers and you know, you know, they're a member of a specific team. Personally, my first encounter with the blazer was, you know, as a mandated part of my school uniform. When I was 11 years of age, I went up to my secondary education and my school had a blazer as part of its uniform. A black blazer, uh, there was a crested badge to be worn over the left pocket uh, and a distinctive tie to go with it as well. So we all, you know, we knew we had a uniform we could be proud of and our school colours were present within that garment. Um, of course, in the UK, children still wear blazers, very much the ordinary, as part of their school uniform. And also we'll see blazers often worn uh, associated with the military. You know, if you look at Remembrance Parade on a, on a Sunday in November, um, many of the veterans who walk past the Cenotaph in London will be wearing a blazer of some kind, black or blue, with their distinctive regimental or service crests uh, and their ties as well. So, you know, still very much part of the fabric of school and social clubs and many other sort of bodies who use the blazer as the emblem, the, the unofficial uniform that they have to show their allegiance to that group. Now, when we look at the components of a blazer, I don't think they've changed a lot from those early days. What has changed is the typical colours that you'll find a blazer in. Now, whilst those fabulous garish colours of the sporting groups uh, were wonderful if you're involved in that group, their wearability in daily life is very much curtailed by the sort of strident nature of their colour palette. Far more wearable, are the most common that you'll see today. And that's the navy blazer, like the one I'm wearing, or black, less common, but still, you know, you do see people wearing a black blazer. Uh, often worn with the contrasting buttons, as you can see, my particular jacket has got gilt, uh, gold-colored buttons. You'll often see them with silver. If you're a member of a military organization, you know, the buttons can often be crested so that they are related to that organization as well. So, you know, very much personalized and great for the situation that you, you like to portray. They can be with horn buttons if you don't like the metallic buttons, but they generally have a contrasting button. Now, the cut of the blazer changes as well, you know, most common, and the one which I personally prefer, is the single-breasted jacket. Slightly fitted, it cuts a nice silhouette for a gentleman, um, although not quite as common, but I think equally smart, is the double-breasted blazer. It has a, a very much a throwback 
to the, the officers' uniforms in the Royal Navy with those double row of gilt gold buttons. Um, they do look great. They give you a great silhouette, you know, they give you good prominent shoulders and nip in at the waist. So they can be really flattering for a gentleman to wear and obviously, you know, very, very much the standard attire for the well-dressed, intentionally well-dressed gentleman. So what is it that keeps me reaching for the blazer when I go looking for a jacket to wear for any situation? Well, I have to say I've continuously owned a blazer since I was 11 years of age. In fact, I, I own a couple at the moment and I own so many and I've owned them over all these years because of their incredible versatility. They can be worn in so many situations and they give you such flexibility as an intentionally well-dressed man. So, I'll give you an example. You're going to a, an event in the evening. It's the first time you've met this group of people before. You're not really sure of the expected dress code. You're worried that if you wear a suit, it may be too dressy. What do you reach for? It's the blazer. It's got to be. It fills that middle ground for those situations where you're not sure of the dress code and you don't want to stand out as being the person who's dressed inappropriately. Because with a blazer, worn with a collar and tie, like I am now, pocket square, you look almost as dressy as if you're wearing a suit. You change, you know, you take the tie off and you've automatically sort of reduced in levels of formality to the business casual or, you know, you're adequately dressed to go down the bar and have a few drinks with the friends. It's got that chameleon nature, the blazer, and it pairs so nicely with the bottom half as well. So it goes well with chinos, I think, perfectly. The khaki chino was almost made for the navy blazer. The grey flannel slacks, <coughs> they are ideal as well, a perfect pairing for that slightly more dressy level with the blazer. But at the other end, you know, you can, of course, wear it with denim if you're prepared to, to pull off that look. I have to say, it's not my preferred choice. I love wearing my blazer with chinos. It cuts that lovely middle ground. You know, you can pretty much go to any event and not feel out of place, uh, unless you're going to a wedding or a funeral. So it gives you wonderful versatility, practicality, and it's that, you know, it's the Land Rover of vehicles. It'll get over everything, it'll do anything, and it'll perform perfectly for you day in, day out. Okay, so you're undecided. Is a blazer for you? We all go through moments where we think, you know, is this the right thing I need to wear? For me personally, when I look for vindication in something that I'm thinking about buying or entering into my wardrobe collection, I often do something which is, you know, probably the wrong thing to do, but I look to the fictional character of James Bond, yeah? The coolest man who's ever been portrayed on the big screen or written about in the literary world. Commander James Bond, secret agent, MI6, the way he's been portrayed is this suave, slick, almost, always perfectly coutured gentleman, you know, the, the ultimate intentionally well-dressed chap. And if you want to know about the blazer, is it cool enough for you? Just go and have a look at the occasions. It's graced the back of James Bond, the coolest of them all. I think every single James Bond, every iteration, every actor who's played that character at some point or another, and in many cases, several times, they've always worn the navy blazer because it is that perfect garment that allows you to go unnoticed but coolishly suave in so many occasions. I can understand why it's been described as the little black dress for men. You know, as women often describe the situations where they don't know what to wear, so they'll throw on that little black dress, which is good for everything. For me, the navy blazer fits that bill for the gentleman. So there we go. Why not add a blazer to your collection if you don't already have one? Well, chaps, I hope you've enjoyed this discussion today about the little black dress for men, the navy blazer. If you have, I would encourage you to give us a thumbs up and consider subscribing to the channel as well. Until then, take care of yourselves, look sharp in that navy blazer, and I'll see you again soon.